Hey guys, BSRC here with RC Nightmare once again. This is video number two in our how to rebuild your nitro engine tutorial. This video I'm going to show you how to inspect all your parts now that we have it all in individual pieces. You can check to see if any of them are worn out or need to be replaced. So the first thing we're going to check is our piston and sleeve assembly. I got the piston attached with the connecting rod here still. The sleeve here in my other hand. And we're going to check what we call the pinch. And so you're going to take the piston, push it up in the sleeve ever so slightly until it stops. Now this is as far as mine, mine goes. You can see I got about a sixteenth of an inch gap between the top of the sleeve and the top of the piston. That's pretty good. This motor isn't brand new but it's not worn out. If you had a brand new motor, the piston should get stuck a little bit lower, right about there, and an eighth inch below the top of the sleeve. And if your piston can be pushed all the way through the top, it's worn out. You need to replace your piston and sleeve assembly. So that's the first thing to check. Mine, real good. I know this thing will give me a lot of tanks of good use yet. Next we're going to check the connecting rod clearances. So you have a large end down here with the brass bushing and there's a small end on top that pivots on the piston like so. You want to check to make sure it's nice and smooth, which it is, and then we're going to pull in and out just like this to check to see if there's any slop. If you have a lot of slop in and out, it's time to replace that. Mine is real good, it's still real tight, so I know that the small end of my connecting rod is okay. To check the large end, grab your crankshaft, stick it right over the top of it, just like so, and do the same motion. Pull in and out, see if you feel any slop. Ours is nice and tight, no slop, so I know it's still in good shape. If yours can wiggle around a little bit, it's too worn out and it's time to replace your connecting rod. Okay, next you want to check all of your seals. We got a gasket like this guy here in a carburetor. Look them over, make sure there's no tears rips, holes, anything that looks like it might need to be replaced. This guy looks real good, so I know that's okay. You got a few seals on your carburetor and Traxxas models, they're all in orange. So you got an orange o-ring here. And I'm checking to see again if it was pinched at all, if it's ripped, torn, anything that would hint that it needs to be replaced. That one's okay. There's another one here in our back plate that seals the engine. That one's real important. Check that one out. Ours looks real good, nice and clean, no deformities. And there is also one on your exhaust port too here, all the way around. That one looks real good. Okay, on to our carburetor parts. We have our high speed needle. Inspect the very tip of the needle to make sure that it's not scored, scratched, cracked. It should be nice and smooth. The black coating should be all around it. Ours looks real good. I don't see any problems with it whatsoever. Yours should look exactly the same. Okay, we're going to check our needle housing. Now all the fuel runs through this housing. There's a lot of small holes and passageways. Just take your eye and make sure you can see through the small holes. Make sure there's no obstructions, nothing got damaged at all while you're running or disassembling. This one looks good. I'm looking through a small hole there and all the way through the end of it as well. On the carburetor, same story. If you see any small hole, take a look through it. Make sure that nothing's obstructing it. It's not damaged cracked, anything of the sort. All those look real good. So now we've inspected our motor. We know what needs to be replaced and what doesn't need to be. The final thing you'll check on these are the bearings in the crankcase. Now in the next video I'm going to show you how to replace these bearings if they do go bad. It's not as simple as just hammering them out. They are a press fit so they need to be uh, you get given a special treatment to be removed. To check your bearings, just take your finger, spin the inside of it, make sure it's real smooth, it doesn't feel gritty, sandy at all and then wiggle it around a little bit. See if you can get any play out of that. If it moves around, you know it's worn out, it's time to be replaced. On your front bearing, you also want to check on the bottom of the engine to see if there's any oil that had built up. That would indicate you probably have a leak out of this front bearing seal. If that's leaking, you absolutely have to replace it. That keeps your motor sealed up. Without that, it will not run well at all. And then we check the rear bearing. It's sunk in the rear of the motor a little bit. You can see it in there. Same story. Just put your finger in there, spin it. It's been real smooth. We go back and forth, see if we can get any play. Ours is real tight, so I know that that's okay. I'm going to replace our front bearing just for good measure because we have it apart. I'll replace the bearing to get a new seal so we know it'll give us a long life. That's it for inspection, guys. I will show you next how to clean your motor properly so you're ready for reinstallation.